Hey guys, what is up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So I'm going to be uh, re-recording this video because I didn't have my headset on. Forgot I had a stream on that was playing the whole time I was talking. That's obviously quite distracting and annoying. So I figured let's record it uh, once again. So I'm going to reiterate, hopefully a little bit shorter on what I said last time. Tesla ending the day down 8.61% compared to the market. Quite atrocious, right? Of course, not doing well whatsoever. So that's... You know, not too surprising, though I'm a little bit surprised at how hard it dropped. I expected this drop, but just a little bit, it's a little bit more severe than I thought. I thought maybe we'll come up to this gap fill, which is around 247. Uh, that's the level I've been talking about uh, several times. So you guys, I did talk about how this general level, potentially as low as 247 is what I expected. We did get there. Unfortunately, we did go also a little bit lower and potentially got even rejected over here. You can see at the gap fill. Uh, as, I, as I mouse over the gaffle right here, you can see this green uh, uh, candle over here pretty much went up straight to the gaffle and got rejected, which isn't the best sign in the world. But let's talk about it. I'm sure a lot of people are maybe panicking a little bit scared or whatever, but hopefully this isn't all too surprising for you because I've been calling a massive drop for Tesla for a long time since up here. And we have essentially plummeted in the last just couple of days, even from this uh, bear flag we talked about all the way down 16%. And from all the way up here that I've been calling, you know, I, again, I kept saying like, careful up here, guys, be careful, be careful. Since then, we're already down to 23% uh, and I think about 24% to the very lowest part as well. So just, you know, be careful, ladies and gentlemen, be careful, not financial advice, make your own decisions, of course do your own research all that stuff but if you guys enjoyed by the way don't forget to hit that like button but let's just jump into it so like i said a pretty horrendous day for tesla considering the markets were up significantly but i also have said in the past about you know half the time tesla essentially just moves on its own accord if you will you know it just it's its own index like i guess is if that makes sense which is you know not too surprising you know that it does that quite often we had the delivery numbers come out a little bit shy of what expectations were which you know isn't great tesla did explain why mainly because uh they had a lot of cars still in delivery like in the actual shipment stage of getting to the customers or just even getting to the country that they're you know going towards to their customers and tesla doesn't count a delivery until it's literally completed and the customer has taken you know delivery literally of the car so just keep in mind even though the car might be already technically bought or whatever or like a customer is expecting it it's not considered or counted as a delivered or like sold so that's something else to keep in mind as well personally it's to be expected shanghai also shut down for a little bit uh you know because it was um uh, adding extra lines I'm, I'm not surprised you know it is what it is i personally think it's it's fine you know I, I, again to me i view it as a buying opportunity uh for, for now for now I, again mainly because i do expect the bounce but i'll go over that very quickly as well but let's talk about it so the daily in general ladies and gentlemen is looking horrendously bad uh the rsi is essentially pointing straight down which isn't great uh pretty much telling me that most likely that you know we probably will go even lower uh, i def i definitely think we will go lower i do think we'll probably get a bounce pretty much around this level right here uh is a level i've been waiting for uh, again it went even lower than the level i personally have been waiting for sometimes sometimes it'd be like that However, uh, you know, I definitely think, you know, we are entering this massive area of potential support now because this was an old area of insane contention, you know, and then we did, of course, bounce up to the north side. So now, of course, all resistance becomes new support and vice versa. In this case, of course, we have a lot of support coming in here. Now we have some resistance up here. So the most simplest thing that I personally see coming for us next is as the market most likely rallies for this October rally I've been talking about, which it clearly started today, as you can see, the SPY also broke out of this channel, which is great. Um, and and uh, VIX is looking to want to potentially play out those head and shoulders that I talked about as well. So we'll see if that happens as well. Uh, Tesla, of course, you know, pretty much lagging behind the market in general. Right now, Tesla is doing the move that the market already finished, which was essentially this massive move down. So Tesla lagging a little bit, but it's trying to catch up, which is fine. Technically, in my opinion, it doesn't really catch up until it probably comes down to like the 220s, honestly. If I have to be completely honest with you, I don't know if it will just yet. I definitely think there's a decent chance that we bounce off of this area, mainly because there's also a lot of support. I also personally think that the bear flag I've been talking about several times before has played out, where we essentially have this bear flag right here that I, again, said was probably one of the most textbook looking bear flags I've ever seen in my entire life. And we essentially played it out, right? This being the pole and the way you kind of roughly want to measure potentially how far you can fall from a bear flag or go how high up from a bear, uh, from a bear flag or a bull flag is with the pole. So you essentially measure it down to where the breakdown is, which is somewhere around this general level. And you can see it lines up pretty well with where we, you know, more or less consolidated for uh, pretty much all day today which is good. That to me tells me that the bear flag, you know, arguably has uh, played out. It's, you know, it's done, which is, you know, potentially a good sign. Uh, so we'll see where that takes us next. Now, 
Uh, if you want to kind of figure out potentially how high we can go again what i personally believe is that we potentially assuming this is going to be the bottom in theory i think we'll come up on the bounce in the uh, october rally to around this 267 to 272 level so if i kind of you know draw this fib again uh we go from the swing high to the swing low which is somewhere around this general level right here and you can see the 0.618 fibonacci it comes down to around the 270 level and the 0.5 is around that 264 so i essentially expect us to come up somewhere around this general like 270 let's just say range and most likely get rejected somewhere around there give or take a few points and then most likely also make a lower low which isn't obviously good but again i personally would be surprised if we don't go lower than this uh, later on in the year um and in terms of the targets that i have again like i said for the later parts of the year whenever that might be whether it's late october early november maybe even you know late november but depending on if tesla still continues to lag the market we'll see but ultimately i personally think at the very least they'll come down to retest this overall red line which will pretty much put us in the 220s uh and you know I would say there's an okay chance of us going even lower than that all the way down to around this 210 level 210 should be the first in my opinion like true major support most likely probably fall still below that if we do i think 187 is next and i think the absolute worst case scenario is 150. i don't think 150 will happen i definitely don't think it's impossible i would give it about a 10 percent chance which of course is not zero and as long as it's not zero you always want to make you know be ready for it just in case not financial advice you know again make your own decisions but i definitely wouldn't be too shocked to see this 187 this is like my like realistic worst case price target in my opinion this to me is slightly unrealistic though not impossible but my realistic worst case is this kind of 185 187 level my realistic best worst case scenario so the best of the worst is probably this 210 and i personally think we i personally think this 220 level is almost guaranteed at some point i don't know when uh, again you know timing the, mar the market exactly and giving you the date as to when it'll happen in my opinion is the impossible part however i do believe that at some point we will come down to this level um so yeah so let's go over uh the r size on the other time frames you can see the r size are completely destroyed now the bearish or sorry the bullish divergences we had setting up completely destroyed non-existent uh, which is really really bad uh pretty much on every single level the only level that looks potentially okay is actually the one hour chart where i mean 30 minutes okay as well where it did go lower however it didn't go much lower it went only just oops ever so slightly lower if we make it a little bit bigger you can see it went ever so slightly lower which isn't that bad right considering the stock price itself went significantly lower than the price we're comparing it to right about 11 percent, which is a lot so that is something else to keep in mind that you know potentially the rsi is you know trying its very best to show us that potentially the bottom is somewhere around this level right here of course maybe it'll go a little bit lower i would say as low as 233 but like this general range right here in my opinion again i could be completely wrong i think should start forming the bottom for the bounce for the october rally again most likely come up to somewhere around this kind of 267 270 level somewhere around you know around there and then most likely get rejected and then make our way even lower than what we are at now at the very least very least come down to this red line uh, in my opinion that's kind of what I'm seeing at the very moment. I'm not even going to waste my time going through all of these. The only one that I care about right now is the bull Andrew band. The main reason is because we're quite obviously below every single indicator, the EMA, the 200, the 50, the 10, the, you know, obviously we're substantially lower than all of those. So it's not even worth looking at just yet until we, you know, start seeing a potential reversal here, right? You can technically look at these two, in my opinion, I guess, the five and the 10 to maybe get a better idea as to when the reversal will come. But I just don't think it's anytime soon, I guess is what I'm trying to say right so until you know so pretty much i wouldn't be surprised if we kind of consolidate here for a couple of days or so maybe let the five and the ten catch up the bull and andrew band were like well below the red line which i also didn't expect to happen to this extent um it's a little bit more heavy selling than i expected but sometimes you know it just be like that right it's fine uh but yeah so that's kind of what i'm seeing at the moment i definitely believe that you know somewhere around this level right here that we're at now the base should start forming again there's a lot of previous support coming into play here where there's a lot of trading happening so i definitely think that should act as a nice support for us for now to get a nice little bounce and then ultimately in my opinion go even lower it's just a matter of how low will be the question so we'll see what happens with that ladies and gentlemen but that's kind of what i'm seeing in the very moment i have entered personally a bit more bullish positions on my you know smaller account like i said i had half of it at tesla shares at 267 obviously that's you know not great at the moment i did buy uh, more today oops and I have a, a, a more of a cash left in that account still in case we do somehow go lower to maybe 233 or something like that. I don't think it'll happen, but just in case it does with the market like this, you can never be so sure. So I have that ready just in case. If it goes down, I 
sweet i'll buy more at a cheaper price if it doesn't and we just skyrocket from here fantastic as well right i don't really care that much and on my main account i did sell more puts which again the majority of my put, uh, puts that I have sold, which if you don't know what that is, I don't want to explain it. You can look it up, but essentially it is a bullish position where it's just another way of entering shares. I just get it. I get paid a premium to enter shares, which is why I like it so much. I'm essentially getting paid to buy shares, which I personally think is fantastic. Right. But essentially, my most of my puts that I sold are around this 240 to 230 range. Subtract 10 from them because that's the premium and that kind of gives you your break even price, meaning my break even for the majority of the puts I sold. Some are higher, some are even lower than this. I did sell some at like 220s, but my overall break even from my sold puts is around this like 238 level all the way down to like 230 that's essentially my break even area so if that's a cracks well below that especially right now then i will be underwater for the majority of them and you know i'll have to be a, a bit patient with it but that's fine it is what it is um but that's essentially the position i'm at right now again i'm not feeling too bad i know people are probably worried i mean if you bought all the way up here which i don't know why you would but if you did you know I don't see us coming back to these levels anytime soon. I'm just going to go ahead and throw that out there. I definitely think we could come back to like the, maybe the high ish 200s, but 300s, in my opinion, forget about it. I, I'll be su super surprised if we break up above into the 300s. Now, the final thing I want to quickly talk about is the potential inverted head and shoulders that we still have setting up here. We'll do it on the weekly. It's a little bit easier, but you can see the inverted head and shoulders where we have the... We have the head here, we have one shoulder here, and we have potentially the second shoulder here being formed. So we'll see where that takes us and if that ends up coming to fruition. I would say that's, in my opinion, the last chance for the bulls to have any, you know, any way to save this Tesla from the markets and its turmoils, let's just say. But man, we, we really need a bounce pretty much right around this level for this head and shoulders to not just fall apart. So we'll see what happens. But that's essentially what I'm seeing. Let me know what you guys think down below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button. Apologies for the previous upload, um, but yeah, thanks for watching. See you guys tomorrow. Peace.